the RX 6700 XT was probably one of the best GPUs to launch during the shortages. We just didn't know it at the time. And since then, with price drops and driver improvements, it started to age like a fine wine. But it kind of started off like old milk. On the other hand, we have this generation's first real budget option, which is the RX 7600 with an MSRP of just $269. And that's almost hundred bucks less than the current going rate for the 6700 XT of just 350 bucks. So why compare these two GPUs in the first place? I mean, they're decently far apart on price and they come from two different performance tiers. Let's just say with the recent driver improvements, the results were not what I was expecting. On top of that, when the 6700 XT is on sale, which is quite often to be honest, the price creeps really close to $300. And then even if you consider the used market, it's an even better value because they tend to go for like two to two, well, 250 to 275 bucks. So in this video, we're gonna talk about the performance gap between these two. We're gonna go over the benefits, features, and specs of each and see if the updated performance, some new features and efficiency can sway your wallet away from a tried and true budget-friendly powerhouse. Oh, and uh, we're gonna talk about that one big problem that's looming over the 6700 XT. This video is brought to you by SCD Key. Are you tired of overpaying for Windows? Well, SCD Key has got you covered for a Windows 10 Pro OEM key for a crazy low price. All you do is click on the link in the description below. Make your selection and click buy now. On top of that, you can get an additional 25% off using my discount code BPC25 for a limited time. The best part is you can fast and secure checkout using PayPal. Type in activation settings, click on change product key, paste in your brand new key, click next, then activate. Now you're all set. You can also get a great deal on Microsoft Office with the link in the description below using my offer code. What's up guys? My name is Juan and you're watching my channel Blueprint PC. If this is your first time, welcome to one of the darkest corners of YouTube. We're going to start with what's considered the beating hearts for both of these GPUs. The RX 6700 XT has 40 CUs or compute units per AMD's terminology, while the 7600 only has 32. This is honestly not a huge problem for the 7600 because it does have less cores, but they're RDNA 3, whereas the 6700 XT, being a generation old, is on RDNA 2. And if you're a fan of ray tracing, the RX 7600 also does have the second generation of AMD's ray accelerators, with AMD states is going to be a 50% bump in performance compared to the first gen. Another benefit of the RX 7600 is the fact that it has higher boost clocks at 2655 MHz versus the 2581 over the 6700 XT, even though we all kind of know they will boost wherever they can as long as they have power and temperature headroom. Where the 6700 XT does have a strong lead though is it has 12 gigabytes of GDDR6 VRAM, and the 7600 only has 8 gigabytes which I know is a big problem because a lot of modern games are starting to require more than that, even at 1080p. One slight caveat to that, which the 7600 does have faster VRAM at 18 gigabytes per second versus 16 gigabytes per second on the 6700 XT. Another cost factor between both these GPUs is the total board power. The 6700 XT has a total board power of 230 watts, while the 7600 is just 165 watts. Keep in mind, while yes, the RX 7600 is on newer architecture and is more efficient, the 6700 XT does have more VRAM and more CUs, which does add to that power draw. Both of these GPUs have access to AMD's current list of software applications. The only real major difference between the two is the fact that the 7600 does have a built-in AV1 encoder, which is great if you plan on keeping a hold of this long enough for AV1 encoding to become popular. My average gamer's test bench specs will be put on the screen here for you. If you want to know more, there will be a link in the video description where you can see my video about my test bench in more depth. The short answer is, it's a middle-of-the-road system designed to give you more realistic results without doing anything that would cripple something unfairly. And we're gonna get to that looming issue that nobody is talking about after the benchmarks. Starting with the synthetic benchmarks, you see clear signs the tests favor the extra compute units and VRAM of the RX 6700 XT, even though the 7600 does make a solid showing. As always, please note, higher numbers in synthetics don't necessarily translate directly into higher FPS. Rainbow Six again keeps things close and everything but 4K, but the win still goes to more cores and VRAM. Forza again closes this gap and stays within 10%, but Ali shows its largest difference in 1440p. F122 shows upwards of a 10% gap and almost 20% in 4K.
Cyberpunk is a super demanding game, we all know that, and this was a lot closer fight across all resolutions than I expected. In Borderlands 3, the gap widens as the 6700 XT shows sizable gains, especially at 4K. Horizon Zero Dawn again repeats the pattern and shows dominance to the 6700, but both perform rather well. Watch Dogs only further impressed me with how close the 7600 is with just an 8 FPS gap at 1080p. Now before someone all caps in the comments, neither of these are 4K GPUs, I know. The point is to show scale when demand increases and emphasize where more cores and more VRAM start to show their benefits. That's why it's important to know that even though newer cores are typically better than older cores, certain scenarios, more cores is just better, as they can process more data, and that's all graphics are, is data. We saw the same result with the 4070 versus the 3080 at 4K. 3080 more cores, did better. So here's the TLDR. The 6700 XT is about 30% more expensive than the 7600 for the current average price. New. But the 7600 is typically within 15-20% to 20 performance of the 6700. If you're okay with the used market, however, the RX 6700 XT and the 7600 basically become the same on price. So you have to decide if you want new, if that extra money is worth it for the extra performance. One other factor to consider is the fact that the 7600, while yes, PCIe Gen 4, it's only by 8 lanes. So if you're running a Gen 3 motherboard and processor, you may see a performance hit if you choose this guy. And yes, there is still that one big problem for the RX 6700 XT. And that's the simple fact that it's no longer in production. So eventually, demand can exceed supply, and we may start to see prices increase. Let's hope not, but until that time, if you want to see how the 6700 XT performs against Team Green, you can check out my video up here. Before that, please hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll catch you in the next one.